Hello friends, welcome to a new lecture today on indirect inguinal hernia. So indirect inguinal hernia, as I have told in my last class, this is the hernia which is formed due to the uh, protrusion of the bowel contents from the deep inguinal ring to the super, I mean protrusion of the bowel contents through the deep inguinal ring at the, that is into the inguinal canal. Or it can also reach... Uh, the superficial inguinal ring and from there it can also reach the scrotum has complete inguinal indirect inguinal hernia now what are the clinical features of indirect inguinal hernia first the clinical features mainly they include this is the abdomen so here there is an hernia right so first clinical feature is swelling in the groin this swelling which is present in the groin this is associated with dragging pain Okay, there is swelling in the groin and there is dragging pain which is associated with this. And this pain and swelling both are increased on coughing or they are increased on standing. Okay, and uh, because they are increased on coughing, the most important part here is cough impulse. Cough impulse in indirect inguinal hernia, it is positive. If the, if the hernia is complete, then it descends up to the scrotum. If it is incomplete, it can be in the inguinal canal itself or it can cross the superficial inguinal ring. Okay, if it's in the inguinal canal itself, it is called as bubenocele. If it has crossed the superficial inguinal ring, then that is called as funicular. Now, if it's complete, it has entered the scrotum. Now, in children, it can occur when the child coughs or when the child cries. If the swelling is reducible, it is usually reducible. If irreducible, it can be due to presence of inflammation or sometimes due to obstruction or strangulation. Now, in indirect inguinal hernia or direct inguinal hernia, we do some tests like the Zeeman test, internal ring occlusion test, ring invagination test and these are the main tests which we do so let me just show you these tests from the lecture which i have taken for the hernia lecture so now first siemens test siemens test it is done either in standing position or in lying down position i prefer to do in lying down position i don't know about your colleges how they do the test but it can be done either in standing or in lying down position uh, first the person is made to lie down and you'll have to ask the person to reduce the swelling so once the person reduces the swelling then we have superficial inguinal ring and deep inguinal sorry deep inguinal ring and superficial inguinal ring superficial inguinal ring is present 1.25 cm above the pubic symphysis deep inguinal ring it is present 1.25 cm 1.25 cm above the midpoint between the pubic symphysis and anterior superior iliac spine now and there is also a saphenous opening which is present 3 cm downwards and later a little laterally there is saphenous opening. Now, what we do is, we have, we'll use for Zeeman test, we use index finger, middle finger and ring finger. I put my index finger in the, on the deep inguinal ring, middle finger on the superficial inguinal ring and ring finger on the saphenous opening. Now, I have put the index finger on the deep inguinal ring, middle finger on the superficial inguinal ring and ring finger on the saphenous opening. Now, I'll ask the person to cuff. Okay. Once he cuffed, I will see where the impulse is felt. If the impulse is felt on the index finger, then it is deep inguinal ring. Which hernia will be present near the deep inguinal ring? That is nothing but the indirect inguinal hernia. If it is present on the superficial inguinal ring or medial to the a little medial to the later medial to the superficial inguinal ring, in such cases it is direct hernia. If it is present in the saphenous at, at the saphenous opening, then that is in the ring finger, then it is femoral hernia. So based on the place where you feel the in uh, impulse you will have to decide what is the type of hernia it can be indirect hernia or direct hernia that is Siemens test there is one more test which is called as deep ring occlusion test 
in deep ring occlusion test we will ask the person to lay down in supine position and then we will ask the person to reduce the contents once the person reduces the contents we will just uh, close the deep inguinal ring with the thumb we'll use the thumb and we will close the close the deep inguinal ring with the thumb and we will ask the person to cuff once the person cuffs then you will see that the swelling is uh, here in indirect inguinal hernia you will not see any swelling you will just you will not see any swelling on cuffing but if it is a direct inguinal hernia then you will see a swelling on cuffing medially here you will see a swelling which is popped out then that is direct inguinal hernia this is deep ring occlusion test where you are going to occlude the deep ring with the help of thumb and then you'll ask the person to cuff if the swelling appears here medially then it is direct inguinal hernia if the swelling appears on the if, the, if there is no swelling which is appeared on cuff impulse then it is indirect to confirm it you'll just remove the thumb and you'll ask the person to cuff again in such cases you can see the swelling which is appearing here during this site then that is d d sorry uh, indirect inguinal hernia the next test which we do is finger invasion test even in finger invasion test we will uh, we will have to ask the person to uh, lay, lie down in supine position and we will have to reduce all the contents now this is the index uh, sorry this is the little finger i use little finger for this test so uh, we will place the little finger from below the scrotum okay we will invaginate it and push it up to enter the superficial inguinal ring now i we will ask to ask the person to cuff on cuffing if the impulse is felt at the tip of the inguinal if the tip of the uh, little finger then that is indirect inguinal hernia if the swelling is felt over here okay then that is direct inguinal hernia okay so this is about the finger invagination test so these are the different tests which we do for um indirect hernia we can also look for we can also do head rise or leg rise test for knowing the tone of the abdominal muscles so these are the different tests which we do for uh, the inguinal hernia now what are the investigations that you do in this case the investigations that you do here is you do a chest x ray why to rule out bronchitis or pulmonary tuberculosis and you will do ultrasound abdomen okay and then we will treat it the treatment of inguinal indirect hernia is always a surgery in surgery it depends whether on whether whether it is for infants or in adults if it is an infant you will just do a herniotomy where you will just excise the hernial sac you will not make any st stitches or you will not place any mesh you will just excise the hernial sac through inguinal approach so that is in seen in uh, children where you do herni sorry herniotomy okay in adults we can do either herniotomy or you can do hernioplasty okay what do you do in herniotomy sorry herniotomy plus herniography in adults you can do either herniotomy or herniography and you can do hernioplasty if it's herniography you'll just uh, repair see uh, if this is the sac in herni in herniotomy you will just excise the sac okay and then you will leave it like this okay you, you have just excised it and you have left it first you have put the all the contents inside and then you have excised the sac and you have left it in hernio raffi you have excised the sac and this is the thing which is left you are just suturing it okay in hernioplasty you have excised the sac and you have put all the contents inside and now you are placing a mesh here that is the difference between herniography and hernioplasty this is herniography herniography is nothing but herniotomy that is excising the sac and then you'll have to suturing it so that is herniography so these are the different uh, repairs which are done 
for indirect inguinal hernia i think you guys have understood something about the indirect inguinal hernia so thank you guys for watching my lecture if you have any doubts please comment it in the comment section if you feel something is inadequate in this lecture even then comment it in the comment section thank you for watching my lecture thank you